Hey there everyone, welcome to Tales and Text and I'm your host Nisha. It's been quite some time but I'm back and I'm back today with a really interesting video which I had actually mentioned in one of my previous videos. In today's uh, Tales and Text video, I'm going to be talking about the top ways for you to repurpose your tarot and oracle decks or any other cartomancy decks which you are not using. Now, uh, I think about two weeks ago or maybe a little, a little less than two weeks ago, I had released another video talking about my biggest regrets slash mistakes that I made when I was purchasing Tarot and Oracle decks. And in that video, I talk about, uh, especially for, uh, you know, people who are based out of India or South Asia or any other country where Tarot and other cartomancy practices are not um there are not common practices and if you want to practice cartomancy you need to import your decks now what are the common mistakes and regrets that you should typically avoid because you know i've made those mistakes i've learned from those errors and i wanted to share that information with you so that you can take more informed decisions about how you should buy your tarot and oracle decks or any other cartomancy decks so that you don't waste money and you don't waste your cupboard space you don't invest in decks that you are never going to use after a couple of times and uh, you purchase decks which you will be truly happy with for many years to come so that was what that video was about and in that video i had also spoken a little bit about some of the ways and ideas in, with which i plan to repurpose my deck star and oracle decks which i am not using right now and so uh, I took some time over the past couple of days to compile a list of ideas that I want to try. Uh, some of these ideas I have already implemented, others I've researched and I've got from online after seeing what other people have done. So think of this as a running list. So, so far I've got around 10-12 ideas of how I can repurpose cartomancy decks and you might have some more ideas so feel free to put that down in the comments as well and um, so yeah let's just get started I've actually made a list of uh, points for me to read from so I'm just gonna continue going on reading what I have noted down I'll discuss some of these and if I have implemented some of these myself I will show them to you if I can because right now my decks are sort of scattered around the house so um and then i'll describe in words as best as i can what my intention is with this particular idea so without any further ado let's dive right into how we can repurpose cartomancy decks and when i say cartomancy decks it could be anything from tarot to oracle the norman kipper runes uh, glyphs absolutely any any system that comes in card form if you've invested in it you are no longer using it and it's just collecting dust in your shelf and you want to put it to use but just you don't want to read with it anymore those are the kind of decks that will benefit from these ideas all right let's get started so the very first um, idea that i had was turn them into a, a book for bibliomancy or for or as a coffee table book now i have actually done that with one of my postcard decks i will show them to you right now so i had purchased this um journal uh recently it's it's a unruled journal vegan hardbound leather and um this is basically what i mean by coffee table um you know book where you basically write okay so this is the name of the deck the botanicum uh, postcards and this is one of the cards that i've pasted over here the name of the card is over here and then this is over here the card is over here so if so if you are planning on using your tarot and oracle decks as a um, coffee table book so for example you have a really good deck a really gorgeous deck but you just don't connect with it anymore but visually it's really great and uh, let's say you have a tarot oracle business and you want to, um, uh, or, you know, or even if you don't have a business as well, you, you know, you, you have this deck pending, but you, you don't want to throw it because either it was expensive or it's really beautiful to look at. It just might not be usable. In that case, you can just take the cards, take a plain book like this. I would prefer unruled because that way there is nothing distracting you from the image. Just paste the card onto the book and just write the name of the card on the book. Like for example, how I've done here with these postcards, I've pasted the card on the book and then I've just written the name of the card right on top of the page. 
and uh, just place it on a coffee table where people can come see it maybe in your most uh, public room for example the hall or the living room um, or if it's if it's your uh, uh, you know cartomancy office where you conduct uh, live face to face readings the office space just put the put the book there and then in that way people and when when guests come into your home or when clients come in to meet you for your for their services they can just pick up the book and then they can just flip through the book and just you know see the different images and they can just get acquainted with what this cartomancy system is they can just see the images they can see what they might expect um, when they seek their services from you or if it's just a guest at your home you know it, it can be a very uh, quirky conversation starter uh, to have this and then you could talk about uh, your tarot and oracle practice and uh, maybe even you know inspire someone to take up cartomancy as a practice as well and of course this is a, a technique that you can implement um, only if your practice is public, that is people know that you are practicing uh, tarot, oracle, magic or whatever other spiritual practice you've taken up. Uh, so if you are having an open practice, then I think this is a great way to use this deck because um, it can make for a really beautiful aesthetic, uh, uh, you know, interior element in your home or in your office space and a great conversation starter. So that's one thing that you can do. Uh, and when it comes to bibliomancy, what I was planning, I think I'll just show you that as well. Um, so I have also pasted the Anatomicum postcards. So this was basically the first page, the Anatomicum postcards. And what I've done here is I have pasted the um, postcard over here and I have, I've written the name of what this card actually represents. That is the name of the card. And then here I've written a small message that I infer from this card. It's a spiritual message, right? So in this case, this is an adult skeleton frontal view. And the message that I've written is, I am strong in front of adversity, just like my skeleton, I am put together and ready to handle everything that comes my way. I am supportive of myself, I endure. So that's the message that I, I felt when I looked at this card, when I meditated on this card, that's the message that came to me and so I wrote that. I've actually done that with a bunch of other cards as well. You know, for example, look here, these are two other cards that I've done the same thing for. The, the one in this highlight is actually the name of the actual card so in this case this is the lymphatic system these are the facial muscles but this write up in blue that you see over here is basically the spiritual message that i got for for each card so i've so for the anatomicum deck that's what i've done i've written these spiritual messages that i uh, got when i meditated upon each of those cards so when i'm talking bibliomancy what i'm thinking of is i'm i can just use this book i can just hold this book i can just like caress this book for a bit meditate on my question and then just open a particular page right and when i open a particular page i let's say open i get this page right i get i touch this page and i open this page and now i know that my card for the day or my message for the day has to do with something related to the brain and the spinal cord and i've written about a, a small um, spiritual message that i meditated that the brain and the spinal cord give me and so when i read that message that could be my spiritual message or message of the day so we are taking your tarot and oracle practice and we're sort of transforming it by making it into a bibliomancy so we're just pasting it on the book we're writing our own spiritual messages that we are getting and this can usually work better with uh, oracle cards or cards that don't fall into a particular system which can work as standalone cards really well and um, although you can do, do it with tarot as well, if you have many tarot decks and you, know, you don't really particularly need this one deck to work as a system, you can, you can if you, for example, a card a day. So you can just meditate on your question, just flip the pages and open a page and that page would be, whatever card is on that page, that is your message for the day. So that's something you can do. So bibliomancy and as a coffee table book. The next, um, tip I had for repurposing your decks is make them into bookmarks which is something I've done for two of my decks I'm just going to show you one deck right now so I had this um, I had two copies of this deck which is the human and delicate affirmation cards I had done a walkthrough of this on my old channel South Asian mystic you can just google you know human and delicate oracle cards human and delicate affirmation cards and you'll actually get the flip through of this 
so I had two copies of this deck, and I um, so I used one deck. I I that is I normally use the deck, and so I've kept that deck aside. And I had this extra deck remaining, and I was like, you know, what I what do I do with this deck because I'm not using both copies of the deck, and um, I had actually intended to give this to someone as a gift, but uh, it was not possible, and so I ended up keeping this one for myself, uh, although I already had one copy. And so I decided to kind of use it as a bookmark. So now I have my book and uh, bookmark. And you know, I think this is a great way to kind of use your uh, use your tarot and oracle cards or any other cartomancy cards because, for example, you can sleep. This is just one of the many many bookshelves that just uh, grace my house. So you know, I've got thousands of books at home. And uh, I haven't just used this. I also used a couple of cards from uh, the Yogic Path Oracle, um, Sahara Rose Kitabi, and I think it is Daniel Noel who's the artwork. Uh, and uh, so the Yogic Path, some of the cards in the deck, uh, I just don't resonate with them. They're beautiful. The quality is incredible. And uh, yet I don't particularly resonate with the messages in those cards. And so I, I kind of split the deck into cards that I resonate with, cards that I don't. And the cards that I resonate with, I've kept them in the Oracle deck box and I've, I've stored them inside for, for me to use whenever I want them. And the cards that I don't resonate with, I've actually used them as uh, my um, bookmarks. Let me just see if I can get one over here. Yep, here we go. So this is a card, so Pratyahara, this is one card from the Yogic Path Oracle and as you can see it's such a beautiful bag, it's just gorgeous and the card is really thick, very very wonderful quality but I particularly don't resonate with this card that much so I decided to just use it as a bookmark and I've and you know because these books especially are really chunky especially in the front row first row that you can see they're really chunky books and so I needed bookmarks which can actually withstand the rough usage because these are the books my my spiritual books my religious books that that I will be going back to over and over again and so I needed um you know kind of like cards or bookmarks which can withstand rough use and so this deck definitely kind of fit the bill and so I'm using those as bookmarks and you can do that too so it doesn't have to be books like these for example if you use a planner so for example I've written down my points in my personal planner right now and so I you know you can use your cards as bookmarks for your planners as well for your yearly planner for your uh, gratitude journals uh, your regular journals where you're journaling every day or, or any sort of book that you're using just you can just pop a couple of uh, uh, them in and um, especially for example if you have uh, these mini decks which you know usually mini decks have very flimsy card stock they're not really great so you can actually put them in there and even if they end up tearing because you're using the deck using the book so much and you're constantly removing and putting the uh, bookmark back in even if they tear that's perfectly fine because there are like 70 other cards that you have that you can replace these bookmarks with so bookmarks is definitely one that you can actually follow now, um, the next um, idea that I had is cut them up for your artwork. This could be for your journaling or your planning as stickers or for your art journaling. So for example, let's say um, this is a tarot card and um, this card has a lot of things going on over here and it's a beautiful card right now let's say i want i don't want to use this deck and i want to cut it up i can actually cut a cup different different elements for example i want something to do with pets i can just cut this this much portion maybe i want uh, a maternal figure represented i can just cut this much portion or for example i love the back and i want to use the back for something it's very artistic as you can see i can just cut whichever elements that i want from this and i can actually use it for my artwork for my journaling so for example a lot of um, people use stickers when they are planning or they're journaling uh, or they're doing junk journaling and so instead of buying these sticker sheets from outside you can pick decks which you which are really aesthetically beautiful but you're just not using them anymore sometimes it happens right we take a look at these decks and they just look so beautiful online and we really want them because we feel like we will resonate with them but when we actually get them in our hands it that particular deck doesn't feel very usable right so we 
we end up just using it once twice maybe we do one of those you know uh, high welcome home spreads for the for the deck pull a card a day for a couple of weeks and then it just goes right back into the uh, cupboard or the shelf or wherever you keep your decks right and um, for those decks those decks are really beautiful they might even be expensive so instead of just like letting them just collect dust and especially if you know for certain that you're never going to be using them or for example you have multiple copies of the same deck for example i have two copies of the wild unknown deck and and, and i i'm considering i haven't make, made a decision yet but i'm considering cutting one of those decks up for my artwork and for my planning for my journal for my stickers because those make really amazing stickers for example let's say you have an oracle deck right and you can just cut out the main image and just paste it in your book and it can be just a beautiful way to kind of journal you can color this up um you know if you have kids you can actually cut these out and paste them in little books and ask them to kind of color it in use their imagination and uh, uh, you know black and white zebra can become a neon green zebra you know just like do whatever you want to just kind of get the creative juices flowing so you can um cut them up and you can actually put them into your uh books now i did want to show um because i did do i did cut up a, one of my decks um it's just like it's still kind of sticking right now so it's uh it's not completely done so i had a bunch of decks i had about four decks from hand me that pencil which were called the show me decks and these show me decks are basically the spread question deck so each card had a particular spread question it was pretty much blank except that on in the center of the card there was a spread question and how you would use the deck is you would place the spread questions on the floor or on your table and then place your tarot oracle cards which i was assisting you using on top of these questions and so instead of writing down the questions or instead of trying to remember what each position is you would have them as a background the the the, the spread cards as a background right um i did use those decks for a year a little more than a year and they were really helpful but then after about a year year and a half i found that they added no value to my practice and even if i wanted to journal about any of them i would just take a look at the the question and just put the card back in and then those those you know show me decks would just be in my closet in my cupboard for ages and so i wasn't using them that much and so i decided i'm going to uh kind of do some creative art journaling with them and uh, so i had this uh, wild unknown art journal which i absolutely love and so i actually cut up okay i'm just going to hold it like this cuz the <laughs> paint like the paste like i said have hasn't stuck in properly and as you can see this this little one is just kind of like falling off so i'm just going to show you like this so as you can see i have cut up the cards into just the questions and i've just pasted them on uh, these two pages which basically um, are called the meditate pages if you can just see over here yep the meditate pages and so i wanted to paste them over here both these pages because uh, you know these are questions i wanted to meditate upon and i love the questions but i did not have any use for the cards so i just cut up the questions and i think i threw about 20 of the cards which Uh, whose questions i felt were kind of repetitive because some of them uh, were rep repeated across multiple decks since i had four decks of this particular um system and so i didn't really need them that much and so i decided to kind of just cut up the questions and just paste them over here and then kind of and if at all i want to journal i can just open this up and i can just find the journaling prompt that i want and i can use it so this is basically how i i cut up the cards and use them in my art journal now you can do the same with your planner with your uh, regular journal where you're actually writing um, you know your daily thoughts or your gratitude or your any other art journal or anything you want so that is one idea now another um idea that i had for repurposing your cartomancy decks are paste them in dedicated workbooks for your tarot books for your oracle books or any other books so for example you know a lot of creators do have dedicated workbooks for their decks for example the reclaim oracle has a reclaim workbook the um i think it's called the bright future tarot they have their own workbook and so they have the, and, and you know for example the wild and unknown journal has a wild and unknown the wild and unknown company has a wild and unknown journal and so there are different deck creators who come up with workbooks that you know you can actually use to work your work with your deck 
now let's say you have purchased a workbook whether it's physical or digital and uh, you end up not using those cards after a particular point in time i would say put that workbook to use to kind of make it a study deck for that particular deck which you're not actively using now i do have another example over here which is this i actually had purchased the reclaim oracle digital copy when the reclaim oracle came out that is the the journal came out um and it was just after her a couple of months after i'd purchased the deck and the reclaim oracle and you will have heard me say this even in my south asian mystic channel and even in this channel tales and text how much i really love that deck because it is one of the best decks for exploring your vulnerabilities your intense emotions because the emotions that mary and the creator has actually used for the reclaim oracle are very very intense they're heavy and um I really loved using those decks. But then, you know, beyond the shadow work aspect of it, beyond the journaling aspect of it, there wasn't much um that I could do with the, these particular cards and uh I found myself reaching for it lesser and lesser as the days went on. And uh so after a point it just happened that the the weeks would go by and I wouldn't touch that particular deck. And it was a shame because I purchased this for my birthday and I really wanted this deck because I love this deck and I still love this deck. And so what I decided to do was instead of letting it collect dust, I thought that I would just print out the digital journal that I had actually purchased from the creator and um use it as a workbook. So what I did was, until then I was just using it on my iPad on my Good Notes app, but I decided to go ahead and get it printed out and spiral bound. And then what I did was I'll just show this over here. Yeah. I this is I printed it out horizontally so I had more space and then I actually took the cards corresponding to the name of the page and I pasted the cards onto the workbook itself. So this was basically how it was and here it was a completely empty space and there's also some you know extra page over here that you can actually write on. But what I did was I pasted the cards directly onto the workbook, and I've done that for everything. That's why, as you can see, it's super huge right now. So I pasted the cards right onto the workbook, and what I want to do is, like, you know, over the next couple of years, I'm, I'm, I want to take my time with this. Whenever I want to explore a particular archetype, particular feeling, particular emotion, I want to come back to this. And because I have the card right here, I can always see the artwork that Marian intended for this emotion and see what this artwork makes me feel and then i have all this space plus this extra page to write in to draw in to artwork in and to just explore the emotions on my terms and then you know i think it would be a beautiful way to kind of compare what my perspective of the same emotion is compared to what the creator's perspective is of that particular emotion and i feel like this would be a, a better way for me to actually use these cards than say just pulling out a card uh, occasionally and just letting the deck sit in its box and because when i'm writing about these it wouldn't you know especially when when it's decks like these which have such heavy emotions and what you it's very unlikely that you're going to sit and write one shot whatever you feel about this these emotions right as you age as you become more mature your perspective of a particular emotion will also evolve it will change over time and so you know i feel like i can revisit these pages again and again and if i want i can always just you know uh, kind of staple on a couple more pages or kind of have these this binding removed because the thing about spiral binding is you can always remove the binding and insert more pages and get it re spiral bound again so i can do that and um I think that's going to be really great. So, I really love this particular idea and I just cannot wait to start working on this. I've just done one card so far. Um but this is an 80 card deck so we have a long way to go. Um but I think this is a beautiful way to do that. And for example, and you don't even have to have a workbook that a creator has created to do this. So for example, you can just take an empty notebook uh and let's say you want to create a a a workbook of your own or or a journal of your own to explore these cards right so you want to talk about the zebra you can talk you can just paste these cards onto the book and just leave some space and just either directly journal what you feel about these books i'm sorry of these of these cards or you can write questions about you know what they make you uh you know come up with uh, or for example if it's a tarot deck or for example you can just uh, uh you know paste these cards on and then just talk about 
the upright meaning, the reversed meaning, and you can actually make your own guidebook with these particular cards. So all you need is a regular notebook and some glue and a pen, and all you're gonna do is just paste the cards there and just start writing. You know, the upright meaning, the reversed meaning, the um, you know, you know what this imagery makes you feel. Maybe you don't, uh, you know, kind of resonate with the ideas of uh, associated with with the particular cards uh, that the public generally believes in. And so you can discuss with yourself about what you really think this archetype means. You can create spread questions for this particular card. That is, you know, you can dissect this card any way you want. And so. All you need is just an empty notebook and some glue and you can just paste the card on and just start journaling about it. I think that's a great way to you to, to continue engaging with the deck, which you might not use in active practice as a um, cartomancy tool, but you can still study the deck. You can still get uh, more adept at the theoretical aspect of that particular system by using these uh, decks as study decks, as practice decks. That is except not exactly cartomancy practice, but practice in the sense of getting your fundamentals right. So you can do something like that. All right. So, um, so far these were the ideas that I've actually implemented. Now the rest of the ideas that I'm gonna be uh, quickly taking you through are ideas that I've actually sourced from multiple other sources. And I thought that these were really great ideas. And um, I'll try to explain as best as I can uh, and uh, just, you know, you can just do a Google search and try to get more information from other sources about these ideas as well. Um, so the, another thing that you can do is uh, you can make a flag chain out of your cards and uh, put it up as wall hangings. So you might have seen these prayer flags. Um, these buddhist prayer flags that you know that are available to, for purchase you know you can they are actually a string of flags that are put up put up on a thread and you can just tie them up or paste them on your wall and that will be a beautiful wall hanging wall art and um, you can do something similar to your cards you can just punch holes on top of your cards over here or uh, in the center of your cards just punch holes and then take a long thick thread and just place one card after another so what you're doing is you're just placing one card after another in a thread on the thread so put like maybe 10 cards 7 to 10 cards on a thread and then it just kind of becomes like this chain of cards right and then you can just hang it up on your ceiling paste it on your wall it would be a beautiful way to kind of um just use your uh, cartomancy decks as artworks especially if they are really artistic aesthetic um, you can put them up all around the house if you have a tarot oracle practice then you can put it up on the walls so that you know people can come check it out and when they come in and wait for you in your uh, waiting area for your uh, for their session to begin they can just you know walk around look at the walls look at these cards it'll be a beautiful way and a uh, low cost way to decorate your space because now you don't have to invest in putting up wallpaper or getting a fresh coat of paint. You can just use the decks that you're no longer using in order to put these up. And of course, you know, if, if the deck has any scary imagery, you can always just take those cards out and just keep them separate and use only the good imagery card so that it has a feel good positive image. So that's something you can do. Um, another thing that you can do is you can send them out as invites for events. Um, especially, you know, some decks, if they have plain backgrounds or backgrounds like this, which you can actually write on, you can actually send these out as invites. You can send these out um, along with letters, with postcards. You can send them, um, you know, just kind of pin them with your postcards and just send them out. Or you can, if there's someone, you know, within your vicinity, you can just go and pop them into somebody's mailbox as an invite. For example, let's say your kids, you know, you, your kids want to have a birthday party or a sleepover, right? You can just use uh, oracle cards are best for this, of course, uh, be, because you you technically have decks which are sometimes more positive uh, overall as a theme. For example, the wild unknown, uh, you know, animal spirit deck is an example. All it is, all it is, is basically photos of animals, right? And so these aren't particularly scary. The, the, for example, because like you don't have cards like the nine of swords, the ten of swords, which can actually or death, for example, which can evoke 
um, fear into young hearts. So you can actually use decks like these, especially if they have uh, backs which are light and which, on which you can just use a marker and you can just write some invites. Or now you can just go in and pop it into people's mailboxes and this would be a really pretty way to invite people over for some event, for for a celebration. And this can be a beautiful keepsake to like a memento from the, from the party. And it could also be a great conversation starter. Uh, so I think that's a really beautiful way to go about it, especially if the deck aesthetically can be written upon and can be actually presented as an invite. So that's something you can do. And you can also send it across as party favor. So that's another uh, way you can use it. So let's say you have multiple decks like this, not exactly the same imagery, but you know, decks that are beautiful, um, but you don't use them. You can even send them out as party favor. So if you are, if you are creating gift bags for people to take home, just pop in a card in each of the bags and you can just take that home. You know, you can even write a thank you message in the back of the card. And uh, I think it would be a beautiful way for people to kind of just go and just, you know, paste it on their walls so um, i'm just trying to find okay so for example let's say this luna moth right it looks so gorgeous right and you let's say you put this as a party favor in somebody's bag uh that person can go home and use this as a bookmark they can just go and paste it on their wall as a little mini postcard it's a beautiful thing that they can use you know and um maybe it might even get them interested in learning about the creature on the card or maybe it might get them interested in learning about tarot and if, if for example you are having a tarot themed party for people who love cartomancy or who are interested in it i think they wouldn't mind getting a tarot card like this as well and even uh you know they, they might go home they might research about this card you can even actually select specific cards of specific people for example if you have major sony decks you can uh specifically handpick which major arcana card goes into which person's gift bag so that you can go home and they can research about it um you know maybe you want to you have a bunch of decks you know let's say three four decks that you are you, you are not using right and you find out uh, let's say every person's birth number and as you know every person's birth number is associated with a particular birth card and if you can swing it you can give each person a particular birth card their birth card in the major arcana as a party favor for them to take home i think that would be a beautiful way for them to kind of get in touch with you know their astrology their 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 you know they can study their natal chart they can study their uh, the archetype of their birth number and their tarot um, associated tarot card of their birth i think that's a beautiful way to kind of get them introduced to the system and to just uh, give them something memorable, something unique as a party favor that they can take home. So I think that's something you can definitely do. Um, that was an idea I really found very interesting when I was researching. Uh, another thing that you can do is uh, use them as coasters. I know it feels very weird when I say this, use them as coasters, but for example, you have a card that is this big, right? So this this card is pretty huge. Um, so the wild and animal spirit is, is typically what a normal tarot deck size is like. But uh, as you can see, this deck is almost double that size. And so if you have a deck like this, and you don't wanna, you don't have ways to kind of either give it to somebody else, that is gift a deck completely to somebody else. Um, you, you don't want to throw it, you don't want to use the artwork for any art journaling, maybe you don't do any art journaling at this point. So in that case, and you just don't want this deck around, right? I think using them as coasters is, is great because you know, you don't have to buy coasters because coasters can also get expensive, you know, depending on the kind that you buy, coasters can be expensive. And it's, and even if it isn't expensive, it's an unnecessary expense when you have like decks like these just lying around, you don't want to use them. You don't have any intention of using them, using them and they're just taking a precious space in your shelf, right? So use them as coasters and yes, they're, they will develop rings. They will get wet. The, the card may tear and you know, that's fine because you have 77 seven other cards that you can use as coasters and you know just keep using them until all of them kind of get wet they have too many rings and they become unusable and then you can just discard them at least then when you're throwing the cards away you don't feel guilty that you're just throwing away perfectly good cards you feel that okay at least put these cards to some use and especially you know when you're entertaining a lot when you tend to entertain people a lot these coasters will not only come of help to you during events uh, in terms of keeping your party space clean and uh, water ring free but again they'll, they'll, they'll jumpstart very interesting conversations so for example somebody gets this tower 
and they might think hey why is this card so violently depicted what does this mean and then you can actually start having really fun discussions um you can have fun games in terms of dip you know like seeing what card each person has in their coaster and then just having conversations having tarot themed games maybe doing the using that as a reading for example let's say when you're you're you have this entire deck right i'm just going to use a part of the deck and you have a couple of guests come you can just shuffle your deck and then just give each person a random coaster right and then when they come over they open it up and then they see okay fine i have this card or i have this card and um, not only are they using it as a coaster but it's really fun to kind of do mini readings for them when they are using that card as a coaster and if they want to take it home after that they can take it home or if you want to just discard it after that you can you can discard it but that's completely up to you but i think it will make for a fun event at night or even for yourself you can you can just use that as a coaster and you can just discard it so that's something you can do um you can cut these cards up and, and paste them into a junk journal you can make it into little pockets that's another thing that i found um so you know a lot of these uh, uh planners sometimes come with these pockets where you can keep your envelopes and documents right now let's say you don't use planners which have a ready made pocket inside that it's pretty easy to kind of make a pocket on your own all you need to do is just take a card and just um staple the page from the bottom and from the side so that way this side if, if the page is over here you staple it on one side on the corner and at the bottom so that way this internal space is empty so let me just see if i can just show you so if if this is the book you and i'm pasting this over here as a um as a pouch i would staple it on this end and over here middle and that way this space is open and so i can just push whatever things that i want on the inside right so you can put them into junk journals or into your regular planners and make them into pockets for for your envelopes for your documents for your other cards for example for the cards that you're regularly using for your practice and this is your let's say your tarot journal right you can just carry those cards along with you i think that's a beautiful way to repurpose your cards by making them into these pockets that can hold other stuff and so that way you're using them and you can actually create many pockets in many many notebooks because you have so many cards that you can actually use from this deck so that's something that you can do um another thing another idea that i got for repurposing was using elements of different decks to create your own self made tarot or oracle deck so let's say you have like four five decks that you don't want to use um what you can do is you can take all of those cards you can cut out different imagery which makes sense from each of those cards and uh, build the imagery for your own deck right you these days you get blank cards so basically you have cards that come uh, you know in this particular size maybe even larger sometimes and they're completely blank front and back and what you do is you can take those blank cards you can buy those blank cards and uh, you can cut out elements from other decks uh, so let's see the magician card you you have five decks with five different magicians and um, you can cut out elements of the magicians which you which resonate with you from across those decks select hand select those elements and then paste those elements into this blank card so that you can custom make your own magician card right that way uh, you are using those old decks which you which are you are no longer using for your studies or for practice and that, that is just collecting dust that you just want to get rid of and uh, but you're also giving life to a vision of the tarot that you have in your mind uh, so maybe if you're not really good at drawing for example i'm not really good at drawing and this is something that i'm actually considering further down the line in a couple of years when i feel like i might kind of you know um ultimately i see myself with just maybe one or two decks uh right now i have around 20 something decks i think 25 decks uh overall and uh, of these i have uh, four decks show me decks i have already cut and pasted two decks i've used as um bookmarks um a third deck uh 
I am in the process of cutting it and pasting it in my art journal and uh, as stickers uh, so that's something i'm gonna i'm doing and i and uh, one postcard deck i've already pasted the second postcard deck i is, i'm pasting it right now to make it my bibliomancy book and a third one is pending so uh so i i think only four five six seven eight nine almost around nine of nine or ten of these 25 decks i've already repurposed in one of in many of these ways like i already said right so ultimately i see myself uh, kind of um going having just maybe one or two decks that i actively work with and uh, the other decks which i'm not using i am actively thinking of actually cutting those up and creating my own version of the decks you know the ideas that resonate with me uh, because not every imagery in every card will resonate with you when you buy a deck there will be certain certain elements in each card that you feel like could have been done differently because your opinion and your perspective of those cards will be different so you can just cut up those imageries um, you can paste them on the blank card maybe you can draw certain elements uh, to kind of put them together and if you are okay the you know in a way to not have a finished material uh, what i mean by finished material is you know because these decks have a particular finish to them they have a matte finish they have a rose petal finish they have a particular finished kind of appearance and texture and if you're okay not having that if you're okay having a having a very uh, personally put together this kind of uh, this this entity which doesn't look and feel like a conventional cartomancy deck but you know it's your creation it's your baby right i think that's a beautiful way to kind of repurpose decks because you know you're not just giving them away you're not just throwing them away you're actually putting these cards which at one point in time you really resonated with perhaps you use them you know tremendously at one point in your practice and uh, they have taught you all that they needed to and now they've just outlived their utility i think it's a beautiful send off to kind of incorporate certain elements of those decks into your grand vision of what the tarot should look like and um, i think that will be a beautiful keepsake for you as you grow older and you know when you are 90 years old you can just take out this deck and say you know what i made this deck out of all the decks that i loved and uh, those decks have brought me here and they brought me to this i think that's a beautiful way to kind of give your uh, old decks some send off it's a very sentimental way to do things but i think that's a very nice way one that i'm actually considering a little further down the line okay um another um way to repurpose your uh, cards or your decks are to use them as wallpaper so you remember how i spoke about you can make them into flags and you can just use them as uh, decorative items for your home what if an entire wall in your room or in your um, cartomancy practice workspace or your living room were to be dedicated for just artwork from the tarot or artwork from the oracle you can hand select cards from decks that you don't want to use and you can actually paste them on the wall like wallpaper you can actually paste them on the wall like a collage you can even take out these borders if you don't want the borders just cut them out it's very easy you can just you have the paper cutters <clears throat> which will make sure that the cut edges are not visible you have corner rounders which can continue to maintain the corners if that's what you want and you can cut them out like that and you can just make a collage you can paste them onto the wall like wallpaper i think it's a beautiful way to do things now especially if you're someone who loves the tarot right and it's just that it's just this one deck that you don't resonate with or maybe there are two decks that you don't resonate with paste it on the wall you know you have this collage this beautiful expansive space to put up that particular artwork that you can wake up every day and you can look at that is beautifying your space that is creating this magical element in your space and uh, yeah just paste them on the walls you can paste the entire wall to become like a wallpaper of just tarot you can paste it in specific designs um <clears throat> especially for example if you use tarot for spell casting or for anything like that then you can and you have specific magical designs that you typically work with or um for example certain cards for example you have a, a major arcana card and you you associate certain minor arcana cards um uh, for spell works for example you're creating a spell for abundance right and you have these certain set of cards that you that you built the spell up using those cards 
so for example um let's take the emperor and the empress for example to me when they work together i it, it represents to me a prosperous kingdom the ability to bring in a uh, greater physical abundance and then i have the pentacle suite so let's say i set up a spell using these cards and i want to make sure that my house is always abundant it's always rich with physical resources now i know i've selected these cards for this particular thing they they are in this particular order for for a particular reason if i paste a mural of these cards that is i paste these cards onto the wall like a mural i will have a working spell always constantly on my wall and i can all i need to do is just keep charging it and just you know infusing my energy and my intentions into the wall into that mural that i have created by pasting the cards onto the wall and you know it will be kind of like this open altar open spell that is always there just you know infusing my house with this abundance with this physical benefits right that's something that you can do now i Uh, this is an idea that I just that I've kind of been developing in my mind because I just found um, an idea that says that you can paste it on the wall like postcards. That was the idea that I found online. But I just kind of felt like I think I could kind of flesh this idea out a bit more, and this is the idea that I fleshed it out into. And um, again, you know, if if your practices an open practice, I think this would be much easier to do. But even if your practice isn't an open practice. um you can always tell your family members you know your friends whoever you live with that you know i just had these extra cards and don't these cards look beautiful it could be this beautiful artwork that you just pasted on the wall right and uh, sometimes it would work so that's something you can consider you can consider pasting them as wallpaper you can consider making them into a collage or a mural on the wall or you can actually actively use cards specifically hand select cards to make them into a mural for the wall which uh embody a particular magical energy embody a particular spell or act as an open and working altar at all times so that's something that you can do and yes of course if you if, if it's a spell that is short lived or you don't want it to there be there beyond a particular period of time um there are gluing options that don't leave marks on the wall that don't peel the paint so that you can always take those cards down once you are done with the magical working and then you can just discard the cards any way you would discard normal you know your your spell ingredients so that's something you can consider all right um another thing that you can do is frame your cards into paintings so you, this is especially works if it's a mini deck um because the cards are super super small so what you can do is uh, you can actually give them to a framer right what they would do is they would stick the cards in particular order just tell them what the order is supposed to look like I would recommend that you know you put the cards in order on a table or on the floor and take a photo and then just send the frame or that particular photo on how the card should look like. Um so what they would do is they will uh, paste them onto the back frame and then they will put a paneling glass paneling or a fiberglass paneling on top. What this helps with is that if you want to use your unused tarot or any other cartomancy decks um if they're really aesthetically beautiful but you don't have any way of using them and you want to keep them but you don't want to discard them you don't want to use them in your practice but you don't want to throw them away as well you can get them framed and then you can hang the painting on the wall you can hang it hang it as a painting on the wall and then once again you know it's a beautiful way to beautify your space it acts as a good conversation starter and you can always just look at the cards that are there it is unobstructive it doesn't take up space in your cupboard you don't have to feel guilty about not using it because it's just right there it's hanging up beautifying your home right so you can um you can you can actually uh make multiple collages like that you can make multiple frames like that for all of your mini mini decks and um you know you can just put them up on the wall you can even use these these framed painting type card uh, frames as a way to study your decks for example you because you you placed it on the wall in your room you can always just look up and think okay you know what this is what this card makes me feel like and like, and you can kind of think about what card of the day you pulled and you can just see this and um um get some additional insight as you just go about your day because you know you can't not every you can't carry your cards sometimes at all times um you know whenever you're you're doing let's say some house cleaning or house work and you can't carry your 
regular cards of the day in your pocket at all times but having a painting or a framed um, set of tarot cards uh, in and around your hall on the walls can be a great way to kind of just um, think about the message of the day and uh, be reminded of the message of the day as you go about your day but even if you don't want to use it for anything else it's just a beautiful thing you know you can just frame your cards and um, that's something that that can be a beautiful interior design for you so yeah i am just going through um just checking if i have completed all of these mm, yep there we go yeah i think we've come to the end i have i have uh covered every single idea so just a very very quick recap you can paste them into books for bibliomancy you can paste them into books for as a coffee table book you can make them into bookmarks you can uh, cut them up for your regular planning journaling as stickers you can put them into your art journals you can make a flag like a prayer flag type of a flag for uh, for decorations for your house you can send them out as invites you can send them out as party favors um, you can uh, you know paste them inside flip books and uh, you can write spiritual messages you can uh, uh, create mini decks out of you by cutting out certain elements and making your own tarot oracle decks using multiple decks imagery you can use them as coasters you can uh, 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 you can paste them on the walls as a wallpaper you can make it into collage by decorating your the wall in a particular design you can put it put it up as an active spell work on your wall in the form of cards pasted on the wall in an active spell work as an open altar um, you can staple them into books to make them into pockets and yeah there you go these are the ways in which uh, you can repurpose your tarot and oracle decks or any other cartomancy decks so these are the ideas that i had as you can see i have used a couple of these ideas and i'm excited to use more of these as the years go on um, if I have missed out any idea or you use your uh, decks as you repurpose your decks in, in any other way, feel free to add them down below in the comments. So, you know, uh, all of us can find more fun ways to engage with our decks that we don't use in active practice or in studies. And um, yeah, I think it'll be a fun way, fun discussion. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video gives you more value in terms of how you can use and repurpose your tarot oracle, the Norman Kipper rune or any other cartomancy deck and repurpose them in good ways, in fun ways, uh, in ways that are guilt free so that you don't feel guilty about, you know, giving that uh, giving these cards away or guilty about keeping them without using them. Um, I hope this this video added value to you. Do let me know in the comments below what you think and uh, let me know if you're going to give any of these ideas a try. And I love to hear from you, your ideas as well. And I will, uh, yeah, keep in touch with you soon. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been here so far, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more amazing content. And I'll see you soon. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye.